Visiting professionals featuring Rob Paulson. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, the clapboard chick is hot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's unprofessional, but you look so good when you... Oh, you're pink. Look at how you look. Same color as my name. <laughs> And on that note, everybody, <laughs> welcome to Visiting Professionals by Student Video Productions. My name is actually Rob Paulson, not to be confused with this man. Uh, really glad to have all of you here today. Uh, today we have a guest that all of you, I'm sure, are very well aware of because he was such a big part of your childhood. Uh, he is an Emmy Award winning actor. Um, he has been a part of numerous amounts of TV shows. Uh, most Famous would be his first series of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, where he was Raphael, Yakko from Animaniacs, Pinky from Pinky and the Brain, some of you may even remember Max from Mighty Max, yeah. the list goes on. Uh, this guy is a true professional, we are really pleased to have him here today. Uh, he will just go over his career with you and then eventually we are going to hit a Q&A session. Uh, where Brittany will walk around with the microphone and if you have anything just raise your hand and we'll get to you. Uh, that is our show for today, so everybody, please welcome Rob Paulson. Now, since we've already sort of introduced ourselves to each other, no! Okay. <laughs> okay, now how freaky is this? You guys are going to love this. Rob, his, really, his real name is Rob Paulson, right? So the two of us got to go watch Fight Club and our, our heads will explode. <laughs> <laughs> What's even freakier, and Gene Miller, you'll get a kick out of this, um, I, I, this is a, a really lovely opportunity, first of all, to come here because I love doing this type of stuff. I'm doing a lot of this now as, in this sort of third act of my career because I've been around long enough. You know, I was the entertainment at the Last Supper. Um, <laughs> in those days, I went by Shecky of Arimathea. <laughs> Jesus, what a party. Um, except that when Judas did that impression, his rendition of Backstabbers, it just really didn't work. <laughs> Be it um, Years ago, I and my family, the entire Paulson clan, used to live across the street in Bellarmine Hills, uh, across Walton Boulevard. How freaky is that? My little sister Shelley was born here in 1965, okay? So I get a, uh, an email from a guy named Rob Paulson <laughs> from Oakland University in Rochester, Michigan, asking me if, hey, Rob Paulson, Will you come and speak at the Oakland University? I mean, this is just, it, it was meant to be. <laughs> so if you believe in, uh, yeah, I'm telling you, man, if, if kismet or whatever, it's, it's serendipitous, it's a pleasure to be here. So I will do exactly what Rob suggested, and that is talk a bit about how I got here. Uh, well, I got here in a car, but how I got <laughs> to, my, uh, to this place in my career. And first of all, I'd like you to all, with the exception of the few of us who are firmly ensconced in middle age, I'd like to have you please by extension, thank all of your parents for me and the rest of the turtles for putting braces on my kids' teeth and buying all those action figures. Um, I actually was. I was born in Detroit a long, long time ago, and um, I wanted to be a hockey player. As a matter of fact, my email address is still Red Wing N09, Red Wing number nine, because Gordy Howe is my hero, right? I, I eat, sleep, and breathe the Red Wings. Yeah. <laughs> I have a big Red Wing logo on the back of my car, and I proudly drive through Los Angeles. <laughs> Absolutely. Go Wings, baby. So um, anyway, I wanted to be a hockey player, okay? And I was a pretty good hockey player. High school, had an opera. I, I actually went to high school up in Grand Blanc. So I was born and raised around here and, and lived here for a while, and then uh, went to high school just south of Flint. So I played high school hockey, had an opportunity to go up to the next level, if I could make the team. I wasn't quite good enough for them to say, okay, here's the deal. You're a good player, we're going to give you a scholarship. It was like, you're a pretty good player. If you can make the team, we'll talk about a scholarship. Five minutes, I was done. It was so clear to me that I was out of my league. Some kid from Winnipeg beat the living daylights out of me. <laughs> Completely legally, but it was, it was, he did me a favor. It was clear to me that I had no business making any money or even trying to make any money in the hockey business unless it was selling hockey equipment. <laughs> so my next deepest, biggest passion was performing. And my mother and father were both involved in music and, and uh, community theater, so they would encourage me and my siblings to perform. And, um, and that's what we did. I just, uh, I, I remember as a kid, not only listening to cartoons like most of you guys, but 
Um, I took it probably a little further and started doing goofy voices and dialects and I knew that I was a singer. And my parents uh, were instrumental in that development for a couple of reasons. And we were talking about I used to go see shows at the Silverdome, Led Zeppelin and The Who and Jethro Tull and you know, Bob Dylan and Elton John. And my parents were like, okay, this is great. You, you can listen to, and I was in a lot of rock and roll bands, you can listen to and perform as much rock music as you like, but you also have to listen to Prokofiev and Shostakovich and Rachmaninoff and Debussy. And so I have a deep appreciation for classical music as well. So my deepest uh, performing level, my biggest background is in music. So consequently, I had kind of a musical ear and began doing, you know, my impressions of different characters and dialects listened to a lot of the Pythons when I was a kid. When I wasn't playing hockey, I was probably spending too much time in my room listening to Peter Sellers uh, or the Pythons or the Goon Show, a fan of a lot of British humor. And then, once I uh, graduated from high school, Grand Blank High School, I went to the University of Michigan Flint campus for about 47 and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember clearly coming home to my parents saying, you know what, I gotta tell you, I am wasting your money and my time because I'm gonna be in the moving picture business. <laughs> What? You're the oldest kid in the family. You're, you're setting the precedent for your siblings. I, I know, I know. And they said, well, you do, if you, you know, you're old enough, you're 19 now, and you do know if you go to Los Angeles that this money we've been sending to U of M Flint doesn't exactly follow you to Los Angeles. I mean, the gravy train stops. So then I pondered that for a while. I pondered that for a while. <laughs> and I thought, okay, I'm going to give this a shot. So I moved to Los Angeles, joined a theater company, Spent about a year and a half traveling around the United States and Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what it is. I have this weird cartoon Tourette's vibe. <laughs> it just happened. <laughs> and um, so I spent a year and change doing live theater, which was incredibly helpful because, of course, as many... Do we have a lot of actors here? Any actors? Yeah. Performers, dancers. So you know, then what it's like, you know, you, you always go up on lines, you make mistakes, the, the equipment doesn't work, the lighting goes, you got an actor across from you who's deer in the headlights and forgets his or her lines. You need to, to be able to do that. And it's really great to do that in, in an atmosphere that's a little more cloistered, that's a little more protective. You can make those mistakes and learn. So even though it was professional theater, it wasn't the Broadway stage. It was more guerrilla theater. We're doing, you know, churches and theater, proper theaters, prisons, uh, interesting stuff. Fascinating stuff. The only time I've been in prison, but the day's not over yet. <laughs> um, fabulous, wonderful experience. Came back from being on the theater for, I mean, on the road doing theater for a year and change, and joined another rock and roll band with a bunch of guys from Lake Fenton. And we had a great time. I spent almost two years in and around Flint and, and Michigan and, you know, the, the greater Michigan area doing six nights a week in bars. And I have to tell you, that experience was incredible because it, it, it prepared you or prepared me to uh, uh, not only be in front of you know audiences but it also prepared me to audition because often when you're performing you know in a bar band you're basically a human jukebox for whatever <laughs> folks are there drinking the same drinks night after night right so it was a great 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 experience and I was still very young and so by the time I moved to Los Angeles again to live full-time 1978 I was 22 with probably three and a half years of really good solid virtually every day performing experience. So I've been making a living since I've been about 19. Now, a living is, you know, ramen and water, okay? <laughs> it's, not like, it's not like driving Aston Martin. It's, it's, you know, it's okay. But it was great experience nonetheless. So I moved to Los Angeles. I still remember my mother standing on the porch in Grand Blanc, Michigan in her chenille bathrobe. You know, my, you know my mother, Jean. And, you know, she's just waving there going, oh my God, I'll never see him again. He's going to Los Angeles. <laughs> So I drove, packed up my little Honda, drove to Los Angeles, and began this incredible journey.